Okay. So what we did at the very, very quickly at the end of the last video was we took our duotone hard edge layer and we duplicated it and we used the Gaussian blur filter. I'll do that again just really quickly so you can see how effective that is. So I just duplicate and then I go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And it will soften all of our transitions. I'm using a 7.2 pixel, but you can adjust that. So I can make it blurrier, but the blurrier you make it, the more the colors will mix with each other and go outside the lines. So I think you want to keep it under 10 pixels at the resolutions we're using. But you could try it at different amounts for different textures. right? So that's 14. That doesn't look too bad. Let's push it to 10. And the reason we did the, the hard edged first is it's very easy to take hard edge away, but it can be very difficult to put it back in. Okay, so I'll settle for a 9.6, right? So then we can blend the two together. And one way I like recently in my work, because I'm always going through different phases, but I like to blend it together, not just by taking the opacity of the soft edge layer down, which blends it, but to do that, like let's say take it down to 88, but then also change the layer blending mode of the soft edge layer to dissolve. And what that does is it breaks up the texture of that gradation into individual pixels. And so it helps soften the hard edge to, to soft edge transition. And I think makes it work pretty well within the black line art, right? And then you can adjust it until it's what you want, right? At different phases. And so what I did is I erased it away in certain places, like on the beard, on the skulls. You can see the difference there. So they come up a little sharper on the knife. <laughs> Just hard turning it on and off. On the mask. And then left it soft on things like the heart. So you can work between hard-edged and soft-edged. But so far, everything we do is duotone. And then the last thing we can do on any of our layers, either our hard-edged or our soft-edged layer, but not on our flat color layer, because we want to keep that clean and flat like this. No color or, or lighting or shading variations on our flat color layer. But what we can do is we can do dodge and burn. So if you think there's areas that need, I'm going to take this down a little bit more. If we think there's areas that need a little bit more highlight or shadow, we can use our dodge and burn tools. And so maybe inside the hand here, I'm on burn of the midtones at just under 30%. And get that shape inside the hand and just darken it. I can go to my duotone and darken it there as well. The underside of the sword or the knife rather. And as I darken it on either layer, you're going to get this kind of dappled look like it's an airbrush. It even goes a little bit outside the black lines, which I like because I'm going for kind of a tattoo look in vintage illustration. But that's because we have that dissolve of blending mode on for the soft edged. And so as it mixes the two together, that's how it will blend them. So this is all darkening. But dodge and burn are dangerous. It's easy to go too dark. So be mindful. 
and then you can always use I'm burning now I can always use dodge if I want to add highlights midtones exposure of less than 30 big soft brush Brightening it a little bit in some places. All right. So now what can we do? You can always adjust the different opacities. And you want to get it to a place where you think each step helps. So my soft edge, which mostly runs through the middle, I think that helps now in its limited way. But I still have some hard edged elements, especially on the skulls, on the mask, on the blade. But I've softened a lot of the fabrics. So I'm going to save it. Hmm. And I'm saving it and have it labeled as my PSD within my assignment 7 uh, folder. So it's updating there. There we go. Now I can unlock everything. And I've been looking at it this orientation for a while, so let me select everything and rotate it. My playing card design here. Control T. Flip it 180 degrees. See if all that duotone and soft edged, all of that works when it's flipped back around. I think it does. I like how this skull looks like it has a lot more light on it. But there's still some variation. But then I might decide, oh, okay, I want to burn, burn that a little bit in some areas. In the midtones. It was a little too washed out. Gives me a little bit of texture there too. Not bad. All right. So now, what are some of the other options? Well, there is what's called a full spectrum option where instead of just doing variations of the colors within, you can really expand it. So on the brown beard, I could put orange highlights, that kind of thing. Um, the way I do it is I'll take my local flat color just to play with it, because it's gonna be subtle, and I'll duplicate my local flat color layer, and I'll move it up above all my duotone layers. And then I will rename it full spectrum. And it's a very simple way that I approach it. I just double click the layer to get to the layer styles. And then I fill the whole thing with a gradient overlay. But instead of it being a black and white gradient overlay, I want it to be a rainbow of colors, usually from warm to cool. I'll often use this one. I think for sometimes I'll use kind of the metallics. If I'm 
being kind of psychedelic, I might use this or this. And of course, you can customize all these gradients with the gradient options. So why don't I go ahead and quickly customize this. That yellow is a little toxic looking. So I'm going to change that color to something a little bit less severe. Kind of fits within the range of my color selections. And maybe I'll add one that's kind of a greenish. And push that over with the orange. Oh, I lost it. There we go. Maybe add another one. Yeah, let's do that. And then I can play with the angle of it. Remember, this is all just a layer style. It can always be turned off or adjusted. That seems like kind of a nice angle. I can play with the scale of it. So how much it kind of spreads through the image. I think about that much would be good. I can even tilt it on the different axes. This is all just to get kind of, I want a little bit more of that blue in there. So there we go. All right, shift this one off a little. You can always type in values. Okay, that's what I want. Now I can set the opacity of it. Right? And you can see how that's already just giving full spectrum effects to my flat color. So we have kind of purple and red, oranges and blues, you know, kind of flowing throughout. But I'm going to actually put it at 100%. I can try reversing it. Yeah, I think I do want to reverse it. And then I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to do what's called rasterizing the layer style. So that it makes it just regular pixels now. All these crazy rainbow colors on top of everything else. This is what my color looks like without any line art. But with full spectrum on top, it gets replaced with this. So now I can take my opacity down and blend that into my duotone color. And it's very subtle. See, it just gives a little bit of warmth on one side, and it gives a little bit of cool on the other. So let's see that with the line art on top. So it's yet another part of our sandwich. And the only issue with it is when you mix complementary colors, like orange and blue together, it will actually turn into gray. So mixing kind of yellows and greens with the purples kind of turn it into just gray. So it, it deadens my color in some places, but it gives it a lot, a lot of subtlety. So full spectrum often kind of works against you, especially when you have pretty detailed line art. So I'm going to use it very sparingly here. I'm going to go ahead and click it on to dissolve. Oh, that's a little too strong at such a low opacity, so I'll, I'll put it on normal. But I can also try other blending modes like soft light. So it kind of barely adjusts it, just in some areas. But won't distort my colors as much. But then it might be like, what's the point? And then pin light, same thing. Pin light seems a little bit more effective at giving it 
little spots of 